Here are the two element equations written in matrix form. So far we have the Ke matrix defined in our code. Now we said that we would deal with this right hand side array later after assembling all the elements of the grid together. We're also going to introduce the EZ array after we assemble all the elements together so that we can only have one EZ component corresponding to each node of the global grid and so forth. So this means the next step is to go ahead and apply this element equation, matrix equation, to all of the elements of the grid. As mentioned last time, what we'll end up with is a global matrix equation that will allow us to solve for the unknown easy at each node of the grid. So we're going to have this K coefficient matrix, an easy array with all the easy values at the nodes of the grid, and equal to a right hand side B array. In order to build this global matrix equation, which includes all the elements of the grid, we need to assemble all the elements together, or assemble all of these two element equations together after they are applied to each element of the grid. To see how this global assembly works, let's write out the element equations for the first two elements of the grid. First, for element one, so this one right here, we're going to write out our coefficient, our element equations. So I'm going to take this first coefficient, Ke11, element one, I'm going to multiply it times our unknown at node one for element one. I'm going to add on the coefficient, this one right here, Ke12 for element one, and I'm going to multiply that times EZ2, element, uh, node 2 for element 1. And all this is going to be equal to minus DEZ DX, and that's going to be evaluated at X equals X1, the first node of element 1. But now that we're applying the element equations to a specific element of the grid, element 1, the first one, we should start using the global numbering for the nodes. For example, we can use the fact that the unknown at the first node of element one, so this right here, corresponds to the unknown at the first node of the entire grid. That's right here. So this is going to be equal to EZ1. So here is our global EZ and node number and this is the element EZ and node number and element number. And analogously, the unknown here at the second node of element one corresponds to the unknown EZ2 at the second node of the entire grid. And lastly, the spatial derivative of EZ at the first node of element one, which is right here, is equivalent to D minus DEZ1 DX. The one subscript indicates that we're taking the spatial derivative of EZ at node 1, so that's the global node number. And also I'm going to include a superscript 1 here so we can remember that this term comes from the element equations for element uh, 1. Putting all this together, we have the equation shown right here. Using the same approach for the second equation of element one, so corresponding to node two, we get Ke211, and for here, I'm gonna put EZ1, that corresponds to the EZ value at node one, and then Ke22, element one, EZ, for node 2. And we are going to get this value for the second equation, dEZ dx. And so I'm going to put that it is from element 1. And it is evaluated at node 2, the global node 2. Then if we write out the equations for element 2, so I'm going to move over to this one now, we're going to have the same form, Ke111, but here I'm going to put EZ node 1 element 2 
plus KE, one, two, two, EZ, node two, element two. And this is node two, DX, element two. And over here, the second equation, two, one, element two, E, Z, one, element two, plus K, E, two, two, element two, E, Z, two, node two. And that's D, E, Z, three, because that corresponds to node three for element two. And we can again use the fact that the first node of element two, this E, Z, one, right here, corresponds to the unknown at E, Z, two, because that's right here. And the second node of element two, it corresponds to E, Z, three. So here we have E, Z, two, and here we have E, Z, one. So this is E, Z, three, this is E, Z, two, and this is E, Z, three again. Here are the four equations that we just came up with for elements one and two. Now if we take a step back and look at these four equations we've written so far, we might notice or remember when we were writing them that the second and the third equations both correspond to the second node of the grid. So this is for the second node, this is for the first node, these are global node numbers that I'm writing here, this is for the second node, and this is for the third node. So this one here comes from element one, and this one here comes from element two. Since we are only solving for one unknown at the second node of the grid, we're solving for EZ2 there, we should add these two equations together, these right here, so that we only have one equation for that one unknown that we're solving for at node two. Combining these two equations, we'll get KE211, EZ1, plus KE221, EZ2, plus KE112, EZ2 also there, KE12E, EZ3, and then we're going to have the right hand side, both of these terms right here. And combining the, so now we can see that there's two coefficients that are multiplied by EZ2. So we can combine these and we can have KE221 plus KE112. Both of those multiplied by EZ2. So we can replace that, combine them together. And we can do that so we can see there's one number multiplied by EZ1, one coefficient multiplied by EZ3, and we have to add these two together and multiply it by EZ2. So what we've started to do here is assemble the global system of equations that we need to solve in order to solve for EZ at all the nodes of the entire grid. So we've started to assemble the K matrix right here. We have K11, K12, K13, and so forth. And this goes down to K and N1, and diagonally it goes from K to K and N and N. So we have started to build the very beginning of this K matrix, this, these terms over here. And, you know, because we have K times E, Z array and B on the other side. So spend a minute and write out just what the left side of the global matrix equation looks like. So this right here. In other words, write this equation, this equation, which it combines both of these, and this equation, write them in matrix form. And so as you write them in matrix form, you're only going to be filling in the first three rows of the K matrix.